been a bit of a slow week and I've been very busy since my trial was in just a few days, but I have managed to come across some hot, fresh, new autism. NBC have published a piece that says that gamers are facilitating the rise of the alt-right because, as everybody knows, all gamers are misogynistic rapists that are in the KKK and eat disabled babies for breakfast. Hail Satan. This information is obviously completely 100% factual because it was given to us directly from the three horse cunts of the Femocalypse themselves. Anita, why the fuck are people still giving her money Sarkeesian? Brianna, fire the fucking Moon Nukes Woo. And Zoe, I'll suck your dick again and again if you give my game a 10 out of 10. Quinn. And you must believe absolutely everything that these women say to you because they all have vaginas. <laughs> Before white supremacists, neo-Nazis, and white nationalists marched in Charlottesville, Virginia in August, they were organizing behind a computer screen. And a lot of that organizing happened through a messaging service called Discord, which was originally created to connect video game players to one another. This is just the latest in the long-running shared history between the gaming community and the alt-right. So because Discord, a public communication platform, is used by people from all walks of life and who belong to all kinds of groups, it means that if you use Discord yourself, you are therefore immediately associated with all of these people and all of these groups. Because that's how it fucking works, apparently. Do you know how the KKK used to communicate with each other back in the day? By post? Do you remember that time you sent your grandmother a Christmas card? I bet you do, you fucking Nazi. Gaming culture has always been racist, it's always been sexist, but the internet has sort of allowed us to just sort of see what has always been there. By that utterly autistic statement on its own, we already know that this person has absolutely no fucking clue what they're talking about, so it pretty much means that we can disregard everything that they're saying. Thanks for the heads up, retard. Emma Vossen is a PhD candidate studying how sexism seeded in gaming is replicated in the real world. Don't let the PhD part fool you into thinking that this person knows what they're talking about. Because their PhD isn't in human psychology or medicine or even any area that would state that this person actually knows anything about human behaviour or psychology. Her PhD is in English. So it's not really the type of doctor that actually helps people. Unless they need to know how to fucking spell something. Her study is based on Gamergate, a movement that began with intimidating and harassing female video game journalists under the guise of fairness in video game journalism. Under the guise? It wasn't under any fucking guise. That is legitimately how Gamergate fucking started. The harassment quickly gained traction. It helped catalyze the alt-right movement, which secured power and prominence during the 2016 election cycle. So you say that Gamergate caused the growth of the alt-right, but we all know that Gamergate started because SJWs were being extremely dishonest in media. So what we can establish from this is, is that the alt-right growing is your fault. When you were studying Gamergate and you were really looking at the techniques that they use, it's impossible not to see the same techniques being used by Trump supporters. What techniques? Harassment? Mocking memes? Mean words? Because we totally don't have thousands of examples of the far left doing that exact same fucking thing, yeah? According to Vossen, the gamers and the alt-right share common ground. As people who are marginalized are fighting for equality, those who've traditionally had privilege, you know, especially white men, feel that they are being oppressed by these people who are trying to just be treated as equal. Except that everything that SJWs want is in no way actually true equality and they have no idea what equality is, but continue. Why do you hate black people? African Americans. They're dirty, they're stingy, and they're just gross. You have a problem with people talking shit in Call of Duty. But that's what Call of Duty's for. Xbox Live and PlayStation Network both allow players to chat live while gaming. They have become havens for hate speech against women and minorities. Just like Twitter and university campuses have become havens for hate speech against men and white people, but please, continue. What I had noticed and witnessed was what, what I call like linguistic profiling, like just based on how somebody sounds. You know, they kind of lash out in like very like a inappropriate ways. Who votes for mission? They allow girls to play Call of Duty in America? Wow, they allow morons to play Call of Duty in America? Didn't that girl just insult that guy back? Therefore kind of making her just as bad as the guy? But obviously she's not in the wrong. 
because she's a woman. But do go on. I believe you were saying something about profiling. Not everyone in the gaming community is sexist or racist. We are having this sort of internal cultural problem with sexist and racist gamers. So what happens when these behaviours move from the gaming world to the real world? Gaming is the reason that sexism and racism exist in the real world. Did you know that sexism and racism were around a long time before gaming came along? It's, it's almost like it's not actually gaming that's causing it. It's, it's almost like it was already there in the fucking first place. Keegan Hank studies the progression of the alt-right on the web. Discord, uh, as a platform, kind of had a meteoric rise in the alt-right. You know, I think many of the members of, of the alt-right were actually aware of it because they were also members of the video game community. Many of them are. Discord became almost a requirement for a lot of these people if you wanted to be actively involved in the movement. The alt-right used Discord because Skype is shit. Discord made a very, very good service. So people from all walks of life use Discord. Do you know that Antifa used Discord to plan their wee gay fucking riots? Do you know that pedos also use Discord? Do you know that fucking furries also use Discord? Point being is when you make a communication service that's very good, people from all walks of life will use it. I know an alt writer who shops in Asda. Do you want to ban Asda? I also know an alt writer that shops in B&M because he's a fucking gay boy. If it wasn't Discord, then it would have been Skype. If it wasn't Skype, then it would have been IRC. If it wasn't IRC, then it would have been one of the many thousands of communication options that the internet has. But why all the fuss just because it's Discord? It wouldn't have anything to do with the fact that Discord was made for, you know, gamers. Those people that you fucking hate. Discord is anonymous and lightly monitored, which allowed the alt-right to control communications and access for thousands of users. Some Discord servers controlled by alt-right leaders made users post pictures of their Caucasian skin in order to participate. That's quite a good idea, actually. My Discord could use a bit of a cull. Okay, Fagman, you're white, that's fine. End across, you're white, that's fine. Definitely not an Arab. Have you photoshopped yourself to look white? Uh, yeah. That's okay, a boy can dream. Peppy Mac, you're white. Spurden off, you're white. Saria, oh hell yeah, you can stay. Oh, thanks daddy. And Hellbits, you're white, so you can stay. Oh, thanks. I thought it would be a problem, because, you know, I'm Jewish. You're Jewish? Well, yeah. This allowed the alt-right to centralize its message and disseminate information around the Charlottesville rallies. Discord service played a substantial role in fomenting the riots that led to the death of Heather Heyer. That really was a sad day. What a waste of a Dodge Challenger. <laughs> After facing pressure, Discord shut down the servers used to organize in Charlottesville. The company stated, We will continue to take action against white supremacy, Nazi ideology, and all forms of hate. That's good that you shut these servers down, but what are the white supremacists planning next? What are they saying to each other? What are their future plans and opinions? You don't fucking know, do you? Because now we have absolutely no idea how they're communicating or what they're saying to each other or what they're planning next. What they've now done is taken their communications even deeper underground, which means that they're now much harder to monitor and much harder to keep an eye on. So bravo, bravo, well done, well done. I've said this before and I'll say it again. An enemy that you can't see has the advantage. Perhaps not surprisingly, James Alex Fields Jr., the white supremacist charged for Hire's death, was no stranger to video games. Unsurprisingly, Hitler was no stranger to vegetarianism or veganism, which is why so many modern vegans act like Nazis. This was supposed to be a joke, but I've just realised that it's actually true. In 2010, his mother filed a complaint against him, claiming he struck her in the head and locked her in the bathroom because she told him to stop playing video games. Get the fuck out of my room and play Minecraft! So basically, you have one example of an already violent person acting violently when they were asked to stop doing something. What if he reacted violently if his mother asked him to stop knitting? Would you blame knitting for white supremacy and violence, you fucking retard? Look, any communication platform that exists will have people from all walks of life using it and saying things to each other that you won't want them to be saying. 
And if you ban them from one, they'll move to the next one. And then the next one. And then the next one. And the only way to truly stop it is to literally ban all forms of communication. But the more and more you ban these people's rights to speak, they're just going to take their communications even deeper underground. Which means they're going to be much, much harder to keep an eye on. So what I'm saying is, you are making our job very fucking difficult. So stop fucking things up. Or I'll mess you up more than Kevin Spacey messed up Anthony Rapp. It's Count Dankula on YouTube. Everybody should subscribe.